Okay, everyone, what is going on? It's Voodoo51292, and uh, yeah, I'm sporting the glasses because for some reason my left eye is giving me some problems. It feels like it's strained. Like when I look around with it, it's, it shoots some pain, like it's strained or something. So I set my contacts out and I'm going with the glasses. Um, but anyway, welcome to the uh, playthrough introduction uh, for the next game I will be playing. And uh, it is the latest first-person shooter, objective-based, team-based, um, RPG-style game from Splash Damage, which I believe is a British game developer, um, if I'm not mistaken. I may be, but I think that they're out of England. And, uh, and that game is Brink, um, which I will be starting tonight um, on the Xbox 360. And uh, it is my first official playthrough um, on the Xbox 360 since I got it yesterday, so pretty interesting. Um, but let's talk about this game Brink. Um, give you a little backstory of the plot of the game. It takes place on uh, the Ark, which is basically a giant floating city off the coast of San Francisco. Um, and basically bottom line is the Ark got extremely overpopulated um, and obviously resources ran very thin and uh, because of this there were tensions that arose and Basically, the Ark is on the brink of civil war, hence the title Brink. Um, and basically, there are two sides. There is the security, who basically, uh, you know, is like the security force of the Ark. Um, and they are trying to, you know, keep the Ark running um, and trying to basically just keep it um, afloat, so to speak, and, uh, and trying to manage the situation. And then the other side is the resistance, which, um, is basically, you know, a band of citizens on the Ark who believe that the security is holding back resources, um, that they, that they have. They think that the security is hoarding resources for themselves and not sharing them with the public. So the resistance pretty much gets together and, uh, seems like they do kind of some guerrilla warfare against the security and things to try to to try to take them down and uh, get control of the Ark and get those resources and things like that. So there's the two sides fighting and um, basically uh, that's your plot. Not real in-depth or anything like that um, initially. But uh, um, some things about the game. Um, this game is definitely different. It's not like any other FPS that there has been. Uh, uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, it's basically, like I said, it is heavily team-based uh, and heavily objective-based. And again, I've not put the game in my console or anything like that, so I can all I can go off of is from what I've heard. And um, what it seems like to me is basically, uh, if you remember the Dead Space 2 multiplayer, um, there was, basically the point of that multiplayer was team-based, objective-based. You had to go around as the humans as a team and complete certain objectives um, to win the level um, as the humans. And uh, basically this game, from what I've heard, seems like it is uh, kind of like a, a more expanded, more complex version of that kind of uh, play style. Um, however, there are classes. There's four classes. Um, I don't exactly remember what they are. I believe it's like a soldier, a medic, an engineer, and like a tactician or something like that. Um, they can all perform different, um, you know, they all have different abilities. You can change your class on the fly, um, things like that. Um, and basically you need to work together as a team to complete these objectives and, uh, and win the level. And uh, it's set up kind of weird. Um, there are two campaigns per se in this game, and you'll see what I mean. Um, basically, you can play as, there's the resistance campaign and security campaign, so you can play as both sides, um, but apparently from what I've heard now, there are eight levels, and there's the same eight levels on both campaigns. The only difference is, is you play as the different sides in the different campaigns, but it's the same eight levels, but you probably have different objectives and things, um, depending on which side you are. And uh, there is single player as well as co-op uh, multiplayer and also I believe there's competitive multiplayer but I'm not sure how that works but basically here's the deal uh, your campaign it doesn't seem like it's that normal flowing campaign story kind of thing it seems like it's levels 
um, in the campaign. You know, just eight levels that you need to beat. Um, and the teams are of four people. Now, if you play a single player, um, it's you, obviously, and then your three teammates are AI characters. And you fight with your AI teammates to complete objectives and, um, and, and win the levels. Um, and this game has also got RPG elements, meaning you get experience points based on what you do, and on those experience points you can level up, you can unlock new abilities, you can unlock new weapons, attachments for your weapons, and things like that. Um, so, um, the way I think I'm going to approach it, uh, well, let me explain what the, what the multiplayer is first. The multiplayer online is actually, there's no difference between the single player and the multiplayer campaign. They're both the same campaign. The only thing that changes is when you go online with the campaign, you get connected with three other people who are your teammates instead of the AI characters. So it's you and three other humans um, doing these objectives. Now what I don't know is if the other team is also human or if they are AI. I don't know the answer to that question yet. Um, but all of the experience points, everything you've unlocked and everything, um, carries over to the multiplayer. It's basically seamless transition between single and multiplayer. They're the same exact thing. It's just that if you're playing online, you play with your uh, three teammates being other people playing instead of AI. But um, I've heard different things about this game, okay? The main thing I've heard about this game is that the AI is horrible. I've heard that if you play the single player, um, you know, you're going to basically have to do every objective yourself. Your AI, your AI characters will not help you, and uh, it's basically just you. It's really not team-based at that point. Um, and people are saying online is the way to go with this game. If not, it's not going to be good. Well, here's my problem with that. I'm not going to hop directly online at level zero, have, having no idea about the game mechanics, not knowing how to play the game, no new weapons unlocked, no experience. I'm not going to do that and hurt my team and just be a nuisance because I have no idea how to play. Um, that would be stupid, I think, uh, for me to do. So what I think I'm going to do is approach it the same way DSP approached it because I think it's a good idea. I'm going to play both campaigns, but I'm going to play the very first campaign single player with AI. That way I will be able to learn the game, learn how to play the game, level up, get some experience, get some uh, ability, some weapon upgrades, things like that. Um, and then the second campaign, I'm going to hop on Xbox Live and play it with teammates. Um, you know, And then I'll know how to play the game and have some things unlocked. And actually, I can actually help and play the game instead of just being a problem because I have no idea what I'm doing. So, um, so that's my plan. One campaign single player, one campaign online and that way also with the single player campaign I can experience the AI for myself and make my own um, you know judgments on that but, uh, but that's the way I think I'm gonna approach it and um, certainly it's it's very interesting and there's a few more things about this game there is a new movement um, mechanic in the game called SMART which stands for uh, smooth movement across random terrain and Basically, it's, I haven't experienced it, but basically from what I understand, you know how in, in games, regular FPS games, like there's something you can jump over, but then sometimes there'll be like a two-foot fence, and for, for no unexplained reason, your character can't get over the fence because the level designers don't want you going over that fence, therefore you can't. Or you're sprinting around from enemies, and there's a table in front of you, and it would be really neat if you could slide under the table for, co for cover or slide under and shoot while you're sliding under, but you can't because it's just how it is. You get stuck on the table or something and you wind up dying. Well, this movement is supposed to uh, prevent that. It's supposed to allow you, no matter how you want to move across the level, you can. You can uh, vault over um, railings. You can jump off walls. You can slide up under the table. You can slide across the table and shoot while you're doing that. Um, it's really supposed to let you customize how you want to move around the level, which is pretty neat. Um, also, um, your characters, from what I'm to understand, are completely customizable, like your avatars, you can customize their outfits, how they look, and stuff like that. Um, there's the RPG elements, like I said, you can unlock new things for your guns. There's also uh, a body type mechanic, basically they're skinny, 
normal and heavy set uh, body types and basically like your skinny character. Um, basically, as far as movement, they can do like parkour. They can run and jump off walls and do all this crazy flips and stuff, but they can only carry a very minimal amount of weapons like SMGs because they're skinny and they can't really carry the big guns. You've also got your normal body type who they, they, you know, they can't do parkour, but they're pretty mobile. They can move around the environment pretty well. They can vault over, you know, a lot of things and they can carry kind of a normal loadout. They can carry, you know, your normal assault rifles and things like that. Then there's the heavy set build where basically your movement is pretty limited. You can't, you can't really do a lot of uh, free movement, you know, jumping off walls and things like that. But you can carry like a full arsenal of like really big, powerful, you know, guns and weaponry and things like that that the other characters can't carry. So it's pretty neat idea with the classes and the body types and the RPG elements. It seems like it's going to be a really interesting concept. Whether or not they have executed that concept well, well, that's what we're all going to find out uh, when I sit down and play it. So I'm interested to see this game. I'm interested to see what Splash Damage did here. Um, I have to give them credit right off the bat whether or not this game is good, whether or not this game is the worst game I've ever played. You have to give credit to Splash Damage that they at least tried to come out of the box and didn't just do another generic FPS. They actually at least tried to branch out and, uh, and do something different and, uh, and kind of change um, how everyone thinks of FPS genres. So even if they failed miserably, at least they gave it a shot and... You know, didn't just produce another generic game. Um, so I'm interested to see what Splash Damage has concocted. So without further ado, I'm going to put Brink in my 360. I do not have an unboxing to do because I got the game from Gamefly. So I'm going to put it in the console. I'm going to start by doing uh, my single player playthrough of one of the campaigns. I don't know which one, probably whichever one is listed first I'll do. And uh, uh, we will all find out really what is uh, is behind this game, Brink. So uh, let's find out. 